of all of Queen Victoria and Albert's children, several historians believe that her youngest son, Prince Leopold, was the cleverest and the most interesting of all of the young royals. His short life was full of intrigue, drama and a danger that was at the very heart of the British monarchy, despite him never being able to see the British throne. Please continue to support my channel by subscribing. The eighth child and second youngest heir of the reign in Queen Victoria and her husband Prince Albert, little Leopold came into the world as something of a medical marvel. Queen Victoria had given birth eight times and she controversially used chloroform as a form of pain relief, which went against the status quo of the public at the time. It was a Christian belief at the time that women were supposed to suffer in childbirth and if they interrupted this natural way of things, there might be divine consequences. Leopold came into the world happy and seemingly healthy and the palace were full of relief. However, this relief did not last very long as his health took a decline over the years. Victorian concepts of parenting are a lot different than our own today, but the royal household of Queen Victoria was bizarre by any standards. Victoria had outwardly reported how much she despised being both childbearing and large parts of child rearing, despite having a large brood of nine children running around. As the eighth child, Leopold was often forgotten and the impact of his birth on his mother may have led her to suffer from postpartum depression. And Leopold's father, Albert, wrote in a letter not long afterwards about Victoria's continuance of hysterics. Victoria played her children off against each other, and one way to do this was to put forward her favourite child over the others. Her alleged favourite was Prince Arthur, who she told her husband, Prince Albert, that out of all of her children, Arthur was dearer than any of the others put together. Leopold was always known to be a sickly boy, just like his father. He suffered greatly with anxiety, which led to a number of physical problems, such as indigestion, and no matter how much the palace fed him, he remained rail thin and weak. When he was a growing toddler, he started moving around and he would bruise very easily and suffer major injuries at the smallest of falls. It wasn't long before Victoria and Albert searched for answers and came to a disturbing conclusion that his illness was a fatal one. A dark secret clouded the royal family whereby the males born to the many match-made couples that descended from Queen Victoria would suffer from a genetic disease called haemophilia, which prevents blood from clotting properly. Victoria had passed this on to her son, and suddenly, the prince's dangerous falls and sickly disposition made all too much sense. Unfortunately for little Prince Leopold, the dangerous impacts of haemophilia manifest in men and not women and it was soon very clear that the princeling was in fatal danger at all moments of the day. Victoria did worry constantly about his internal bleeding, and nobody believed that he would survive into adulthood. As well as this condition passed from his mother, medical professionals also believed that the prince was suffering from another illness. Leopold would suffer from fits, which led them to believe he had epilepsy, which at the time was a sign that he was cursed or bewitched. The family did not deal with his depositions very well, with his mother taking full control over his life. Queen Victoria was very protective of her son, and she kept him practically under lock and key, and from the moment he could crawl, he had a whole team of doctors constantly checking up on him and making sure that the royal didn't have a hair out of place. Leopold was only eight years old when his father died in 1861. Albert was only 42 when the Grim Reaper came knocking 
and his passing through Queen Victoria into a notorious state of mourning. Prince Leopold had not only inherited his sickly disease from his mother, but he had also inherited her looks. His wide, heavy-lidded eyes, the set of his small mouth, and his oval face as well as Victoria's light hair. As a male member of the monarchy, it was tradition for the princes to form part of the military, but due to his condition, his mother banned him from all military service, accepting some honorary positions that were merely symbolic. All of his brothers went on to have some form of military service, which must have been bittersweet for him to witness, and a massive downer to his ego, and something that likely humiliated the young Victorian man. So something had to give. Leopold could not be physical in any way, and so he turned his attention to his mental capabilities. The prince had the best tutors royalty could buy, but no less than the poet Laurit Alfred, Lord Tennyson noted the boy's quick mind and immense capacity for learning. Despite being academically bright, this did not rid him of his rebellious nature. As a teenager, he began to grow tired of his mother's watchful and overbearing eye, and so he became a college boy. He had to beg and plead with Queen Victoria to let him attend the University of Oxford out in the world. Victoria finally relented when he was 19, and Leopold got a tiny taste of what independence felt like. Still feeling constrained by his mother's watchful eye, Leopold went to drastic measures to win his full freedom. He made the decision that getting married was his only hope of getting out, and he started his quest for a wife by looking around Europe for a royal bride. As a Prince of England, Leopold should obviously have no trouble at finding a wife, right? His secret illness was no longer a secret, which meant that unfortunately for Leopold, he wasn't exactly the most eligible bachelor. As a result, he went through a painful number of options, including the heiress Daisy Maynard and Princess Frederica of Hanover but all of them rejected him for one reason or another. Then his meddling mother got involved in the matchmaking process and set him up on a blind date. She was actually extremely good at her matchmaking and after watching him fail over and over again, she soon suggested that Leopold meet up with Princess Helena, the daughter of a German prince and one of Leopold's distant cousins. The German princess had a bad reputation in England for being frigid and distant, but the truth couldn't have been further from this gossip. She was the exact opposite. She loved being among the people. Helena was also very beautiful, and therefore she was absolutely perfect for Leopold. Princess Helena was, was unusually and shockingly educated for a woman of her time, and she could compete with her match on an intellectual level. She loved math and philosophy, and Leopold was impressed with her. He was completely delighted with her, and he even introduced Helena to his academic circle of friends from Oxford. Obviously, Helena impressed them mightily, because she continued lifelong friendships with the group. Leopold had a lovely, extravagant royal wedding, as you would expect for a prince of England. He didn't wait around and he jumped right into matrimony with Helena, marrying her on the April 27th, 1882. He was 29 years old and she was 8 years his junior at just 21. The wedding was a royal fairy tale. Helena's train was a full six yards long and embroidered in silver. The service was performed by the Archbishop of Canterbury. As a nervous groom and as one who was not used to the giant public displays of affection and publicity, 
Helena was clear and confident with her vows, but this cannot be said for Leopold. He mumbled his way through the service with not so distinctly audible answers. Unlike many of the arranged marriages of the past, especially in the royal family, Leopold did well to find true love with Helena. It has been reported that their marriage was blissful, with the married pair complementing each other well. Leopold was just happy to have gained his independence from his mother, finally. They went on to produce children, and only a year later, his wife gave birth to his first child, Princess Alice, in 1883. Leopold was living with a curse, and he would pass his disease on to his daughter. As a female, she would not see the impact of haemophilia, but she would go on to become a royal carrier. Determined to grow their family, only a year later, the pair would go on to become pregnant again in 1884. They were in the prime of their lives. They were enjoying family time together with their daughter and their baby on the way. They envisioned a long, bright future together, raising little royals for Grandma Victoria. But unfortunately, Leopold's body had a different plan in store for him when it began to fail him. Leopold was approaching 30, but his royal blood disease was beginning to cause him joint pains during the cold and wintry English winters. His doctors urged him to seek better climates abroad away from his pregnant wife in Cairns, but this would be his ultimate undoing. Leopold was part of a large brood and he particularly was close to Princess Louise, who was Queen Victoria's sixth child and only five years older than Leopold. Louise was the rebel of the family, and when Leopold was still a child, she set him a particularly bad example when he was caught up in one of her scandals. It is rumoured that Princess Louise began an affair with Leopold's tutor, Walter Sterling, before falling in love and creating a secret love child that would be brought up by a non-royal family, but this was never proven. Leopold was only 14 years old at the time, but he already knew which side he was on. Leopold did not portray a rebellious boy, but he was a geeky guy with a cheeky side. When Queen Victoria dismissed Walter Sterling from royal service, Leopold still kept up a secret correspondence with the man. Despite living a marriage of bliss, it has been alleged that Leopold may have been set to marry another woman called Alice Liddell. She was the real-life inspiration for Alice's adventures in Wonderland, with some even suggesting that he named his daughter Alice after her. But others allege that he was not in love with Alice, but instead he was in love with her younger sister, Edith, who was closer to his age. Alice served as a secret smokescreen for Leopold's undying devotion to Edith. If he was so in love with Edith, why did he not go on to marry her? The answer is a heartbreaking one. In 1876, when Leopold was feigning in his quest for a bride, the young little girl died from measles or periontonitis, which is inflammation of the abdomen. Leopold played his part in her funeral with a touching display of affection when he helped carry her coffin into the funeral procession. Queen Victoria lived in fear that her precious boy would be suddenly taken from her, and so she was overbearing and protected of him and his health. But as the years went on, she enjoyed the control she had over him and the fact that he relied on her so heavily. He was kept at her side, just how she liked it, before giving him a promotion to handle her affairs. When Leopold was a young adult, he became Queen Victoria's personal secretary, an unofficial position that his father Prince Albert had mostly held before his untimely passing. In some ways, Leopold's meticulous mind was ideal for this position, 
though it also pushed him to be concerned with court interests, something he was much less interested in. Leopold was a smart man. His time at Oxford was some of the best years of his life, where he made lifelong friends. He clinked glasses with celebrities like Oscar Wilde, John Rusking and Lewis Carroll. While these were socially acceptable activities for a royal prince, he was also embroiled in a secret society that his brother introduced him to. The future King of England, Edward, who was notorious for his debauched behaviour and scandals. He was introduced into the notorious secret society, the Freemasons. Leopold was no lonely rank and file either. After all, Albert Edward was a worshipful master and the most senior member of the Oxford location. Following the advice of his doctors, Leopold left his pregnant wife behind to travel to, in February of 1884, in the hope to reduce his haemophilic symptoms. He was staying at the lovely Villa Nevada residence. He had been there for a month when disaster struck. While in his villa on March 27th, he slipped and fell. This should have been a minor ordeal, but due to the prince's blood clotting disease, when he hit his knee and banged his head, it was catastrophic. The prince had been reminded of the dangers of hurting himself and how the tiniest of bruises and bang-ups could lead him severely injured or worse, and for good reason. This fall was devastating to the royal. His condition worsened over the coming hours, until in the early morning of March 28th, the prince never woke up. The culprit behind his untimely end was gruesome. He had done well to avoid this level of injury throughout his life but his luck had finally run out. This small bang to his head had led to a fatal cerebral haemorrhage, which led to his death. In his tragic wake, he left destruction when his mother mourned him deeply. When Victoria heard of Leopold's passing, her response was absolutely heartbreaking. She had already suffered the loss of her dear Albert, as well as Leopold's older sister, Alice, and she was beside herself with grief and loneliness, as she wrote in her journal. To lose another dear child, far from me, and one who was so gifted, and such a help to me, is too dreadful. Then his wife was left alone, still pregnant at home, and full of grief. She gave birth to the son he would never meet in that summer, Charles Edward, who would never know his father. His deadly disease was luckily not passed to his son, but that didn't mean that his family was safe. Leopold truly may have been cursed, and the curse did not end with his death. In the years after his death, his children and his wife suffered heart-wrenching fates. His first daughter Alice passed her haemophilia genes on to her eldest son Rupert, who then went on to die at the young age of 20 in a car accident, an event that his illness surely made worse. Yet Leopold's own son did more damage to his name when he lost his way. Growing up without a father figure is difficult, and little Charles Edward needed some guidance in his life. The man was not plagued by his father's royal disease, but he was played with the extremist ideologies when his son turned into a Nazi sympathiser, fighting on the German side in both World War I and World War II, before the English government stripped him of his titles for his participation. He became estranged in 1954. Charles Edward passed away while living in poverty. Leopold was the first known male royal in the British line to suffer from haemophilia, but he wasn't the last. The tragic tale of his legacy is infamous. One of Victoria's granddaughters was Princess Alex of Hesse, who was also a carrier of haemophilia, and she became Alexandra, the last Tsarina of Russia. 
Alexandra ended up passing on her haemophilia to her firstborn son, Alexei. Alexei's haemophilia was severe and his mother grew desperate, even seeking the controversial help of the dark holy man Rasputin to save Queen Victoria's great-grandson. This, as we know now, was one of the matches that lit the Russian Revolution and eventually toppled the Russian royal family. Please continue to support my channel by subscribing. Please comment, like and subscribe if you wish for more stories and leave your suggestions below and I will endeavour to cover them.